Hello and welcome everyone to a new episode of Windows. In fact, it's a special episode of Windows where we are going to discuss many things related to the uh, Egyptian um, air, uh, Egypt air plane, um, which um, went missing uh, uh, hours ago. And not only about uh, this plane, it's about the surroundings, it's about the uh, territorial image, it, uh, it's about terrorism, it's about the challenges facing the Middle East, facing Egypt as playing a key role. It's our destiny to be um, a key player when it comes to the Middle East, to the Islamic and Arab nation, to the Mediterranean, to the African countries. Egypt is going always to be the big sis. Well, before we start, let me first welcome our, our dear guests live here in the studio, Ambassador uh, Dr. Mohammed Hegazi, former Assistant Foreign Minister. Thank you very much for being with us, sir. I know. And Dr. Ibrahim Hegazi, member of our parliament. Thank you, sir, for being with it's us. It's a pleasure. Pleasure to be with you. Before I start, of course, I should um, say, till the moment, we don't know exactly what happened and we should not jump into conclusions. We should wait till the investigations are already up. But after the directives of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, uh, which he has given to um, the Civil Aviation Ministry, to the military, to everyone related, every side related to this, just to have this committee as quick as possible to investigate and to report to the presidency the exact details about what took place. First, how do you see, how do you see the image in general, sir? Uh, I think this is a very... Uh sad and important moment mm -hmm. that needs all our attention first to find out uh, the whereabouts of uh, our missing plane mm -hmm. and uh, to stood firm uh, to support and to comfort the families uh, of the passengers mm -hmm. and uh, to stay with the hope that something will comfort us all in Egypt and worldwide. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, witnessed uh, a very professional uh, way of dealing with the matter mm -hmm. from the beginning. Uh, the president called for uh, the National Security uh, Council to hold his meetings mm -hmm. and then uh, we uh, attended uh, and we witnessed a very important international uh, press conference by uh, uh, Minister Sharif Fathi of Civil uh, Aviation. Yeah. Uh, the media as well uh, were following truly the rules in such uh, an important event without speculation, as you suggested in mm -hmm. your uh, intro. And yep. uh, of course, this is a moment that we all have to be together uh, to support uh, uh, the families, first of all, to support the families. Again, I repeat, to stood firm yeah. uh, to uh, make our stance uh, united, uh, to support our national uh, airliner, and to thank also all the friends uh, and partners, uh, the French, the Greeks. We are going to tackle this in detail, sir, but let me take it from here and from the media issue. Dr. Ibrahim, when it comes to the media and how the media tackled the story, unfortunately, there are all the time doubts. And the media is all the time, not only the media, by the way, the media, the government are accused of being not that much transparent in giving the details to the citizens. Why we do not say that the debris found are from Egypt Air uh, flight? Why we do not say the details about what's going on? Why all the time there are doubts that something is hidden? Um, we have listened not only to His Excellency uh, uh, Sharif Fathi, our um, Minister of Civil Aviation, we have listened also to the French top officials, whether the Prime Minister or the Minister of Foreign Affairs. They all said the same. They all said that no data till the moment is are available and we should not jump into conclusions mm -hmm. but the simple the layout man all, all the time has doubts do you have any explanations why first of all i would like to pay my condolences for all uh, the lost uh, spirits and souls uh, from egypt from france and i strongly believe that uh, the loss today is not uh, egypt air loss it's not egypt loss it's a global loss sure uh, Unfortunately, I was watching TV before coming to the show, and I was really very proud of our uh, vice president of Egypt Air when he was interviewed by CNN uh, mm -hmm. announcer Christian Amanpour. And obviously, I was really focusing on the type of questions that were raised. Yeah. And unfortunately, I have to admit that they were uh, sort of directed mm -hmm. questions, not uh, you know, a Q&A transparent questions. They mm -hmm. are well directed to certain points. Yeah. Different issues 
are not totally related to the accident. They're rather totally telling about trapping. Uh, either His Excellency, the Minister of Civil Aviation, when she was focusing on, he is claiming it's more into a bomb. If and you permit me to interrupt here, yeah. His Excellency, the Minister of Civil Aviation, was very much smart when he said that this question leads to nothing when he was answering some of those, of those questions of that kind, sir. Yeah. So that's why uh, when you ask me about the media and uh, the feedback from the media in terms of questions and direction of the questions, uh, for, for, for me as an observer and as an official observer, I can tell you the question was not really very uh, transparent objective. and clear. And objective. Yeah. They are more directly to lead to certain make the blame to Egypt, mm -hmm. not to any other country. But on the other side, when you see the official announcements by the president of France, uh, President Hollande, François Hollande. Uh, he was clearly saying that it is somehow a sort of a terrorist attack. Yeah. Until now, it was announced earlier that the debris were from Egypt there, but just coming minutes ago, again, even the national uh, TV of Egypt announced that the Greek authorities said they are not the debris of Egypt there. So right now, we cannot say that Egypt is hiding anything because mm -hmm. our feedback is coming from international uh, partners in this uh, Let church. me be that accurate. To whom it may concern, the official letter which came from Greece to Egypt said that the Greek uh, forces uh, found floating objectives right. which, seems to be, which seem to be coming from the plane, but till the moment nothing is sure. This is exactly what was written in the official letter sent by Greece. Ambassador Hegazi, you've said during, what, uh, during your, uh, your, the, the answer of my first question to you that we should say thank you for our allies. I think uh, according to the new era Egypt is, is living or uh, started two years ago, our foreign affairs are now based on different basis. Mutual respect, win-win situation when it comes to economy and investment and stuff. And when it comes to Matteo Renzi, for example, uh, it, the Italian foreign minister who was one of the very first world leaders to uh, phone President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to, uh, uh, to uh, suggest that any kind of help or support by the Italian forces is going to be um, as quick as possible. And in addition to that, of course, we will find the, um, the Arab uh, leaders like uh, King Abdullah II of Jordan, uh, uh, Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas, uh, Francois Hollande, uh, Russian uh, President Vladimir Putin. I'm not going to, to mention all of them because, of course, I'm going to uh, forget some. How do you see this situation and how it's reflected onto those phone calls and the show of support? Yeah, I think the, uh, looking at the rescue and search mission that is now undertaking uh, place in the uh, Mediterranean uh, water sea, sea uh, shows that many countries have already deployed uh, uh, reconnaissance missions, search, naval uh, uh, forces, mm -hmm. and uh, I can name, of course, the Egyptian uh, naval force are there. Sure. The uh, Greek uh, authorities since uh, the start of the tragedy uh, the Italian, as you said, uh, the Prime Minister called the President uh, expressing his uh, willingness. And condolences and too. And condolences too. And I think uh, one has to confine himself for the time being uh, to a rescue and search mission mm -hmm. uh, till uh, we find out uh, what happened uh, for uh, the missing plane. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely what has been said uh, this afternoon by uh, Sharif Fathi, our Minister uh, for Civil Aviation, is so important that mm -hmm. we may hear uh, a lot of uh, uh, media reports, but we have to adhere mm -hmm. uh, to the official uh, statements. Mm -hmm. In uh, uh, a situation like this, where the rescue mission is taking place in a very complicated uh, water uh, terrain, one has to understand that we have to wait uh, till uh, an official announcement is made about uh, the fate uh, of the uh, missing uh, uh, flight uh, Egypt Air. Yes, sir. All scenarios are valid at yeah. the moment. Yeah, of course. So, and uh, there are many experts who said that most probably it's a terror attack. We are not going to jump into conclusions. But what if? 
Uh, I, I think uh, the if is not in the political analysis. One has to wait mm -hmm. uh, till the investigation uh, and the search mission and the containing uh, details of the uh, black box of the plane, if it is a wreckage. Mm -hmm. But if uh, this rescue mission has proven uh, any conclusion, uh, will be the first to comment. Yeah. I've asked this question because without mentioning this plain issue, terrorism is a threat not only to Egypt but to the whole world. And I think it was September 2014, it was when uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi was for the first time in the UN and he said it. He, he, uh, he put it as a warning to the whole world. Terrorism is a phenomenon and it's not directed to Egypt or to the Middle East but to the whole world. Unfortunately, the whole world did not learn the lesson except after many attacks which took place around the world. What should the international community do now? I mean, to ha what are the concrete steps which should be taken on the ground? Okay, now talking about terrorism as a phenomenon, yeah. apart from talking about Egypt air flight in mm -hmm. order not to draw conclusions. One yes. has to stick mm -hmm. to the official statement. Uh, stipulated this afternoon by Dr. Sharif, uh, Engineer Sharif Fathi, yeah. uh, the Civil Aviation Minister, mm -hmm. that there is no uh, explanation given for the moment and uh, uh, mm -hmm. there is no exclusion to any possibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, on that, I leave the Egypt again with my sympathy and support to the family which we all uh, share mm -hmm. and gratitude to the official uh, uh, transparent stance and to our friends. Mm -hmm. uh, by uh, having said that, I move now to the phenomena. Terrorism yes. is uh, definitely a very important uh, issue that is threatening peace and security, not only in Egypt or the region, but worldwide. We've been uh, attacked and still is. Uh, we have witnessed incidents in uh, Europe, uh, the United States, and no place is excluded. Egypt, uh, this month of May, is the president of the United Nations Security, Security Council. Council. And uh, Minister Shukri just came there before yesterday. Our top uh, diplomat, Foreign Minister Samih Shukri. Uh, Mr. Samih Shukri uh, uh, attended and called for while he was the president of the Security uh, Council, Egypt is, uh, for the month of May, called for a special session to deal with the ideology of terrorism. Ter terrorism is a phenomenon that is now transboundary mm -hmm. and uh, they are well connected, yes. well financed and uh, well supplied, unfortunately. Routes are open and recruits are open as well as uh, the, the uh, support they are getting from uh, many places, regional uh, uh, powers or otherwise. Yeah. Uh, back again to our session in the Security Council, this time we did call for uh, the international community to deal with the ideology of terrorism, mm -hmm. how we can ideologically deal with terrorism. And uh, we uh, have to confront the phenomena on too many different levels. Of mm -hmm. course, security and military is one, mm -hmm. which is very important, but most importantly is to confront it economically, to allow more chances, development is a key, mm -hmm. cultural uh, uh, confrontation as well as ideological conf confrontation. We, ha we have to defeat the thoughts and ideas that is stemming uh, 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 the heat uh, uh, that brings in... What you just said was the core of the speech of uh, Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Al Imam Al-Akbar, Sheikh Ahmed Al-Tayyib, when he was in Nigeria, he's still in Nigeria. He, he, he has not arrived yet, and we are going to speak about this in detail, but let me go to uh, Dr. Ibrahim Hagazi and to speak a little bit about the reaction policy. According to the uh, uh, Associated Press, uh, France has tightened the Paris airport security since attacks. France has, uh, as in, uh, with some 5,000 security guards working for private contractors, are assigned to the Charles de Gaulle, Orly, and Le Bourget airport, according to Paris airport, the authority in charge. Should we wait until something happens and then to react? And if this is the, the solution, it was proved that, as um, Ambassador Higazi just said a few minutes ago, the security solution, solution cannot work by itself, cannot work alone. So how do you see 
those 5,000 security guards assigned to, uh, uh, to be added to, uh, to secure or to guarantee that uh, airports in France are secure? Um, actually, I would like just to step back a little bit uh, and, 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 and just pinpoint yeah. to a couple of issues. Yeah. We have to go back to the attack that took place uh, in Sharm el-Sheikh for the airliner, mm -hmm. the Russian airliner. It came at a time where Egypt was getting closer to the, the Russian uh, government mm -hmm. in terms of military support and other things. And then, boom, this happens. Now, as you can see, if Egypt is getting closer to France. And as a matter of fact, I have to tell you that next week we have a group of uh, French parliamentary mm -hmm. that are coming to visit Egypt. They're going to meet us as a uh, member of the parliament, and they will meet the president uh, of the republic, Mr. Uh, Fatah uh, Sisi. So I, I don't think these are all coincidences. Sure. That, that these things happen when we get closer. Mm -hmm. It's by all means. We have to be uh, clearly aware. It's not a matter of terrorism only. only. It's a matter of... By the way, we are going to be accused of the conspiracy theory. That's, uh, I'm, I'm speaking not as an official member of the government, but I'm speaking as a politician mm -hmm. who is uh, very uh, uh, careful about what he says. And these are question marks mm -hmm. that I'm not accusing anybody. I'm saying these are question marks yeah. that we can all notice that Egypt is targeted by a lot of intelligence from outside Egypt. Mm -hmm. We don't know what are these intelligences. Mm -hmm. So it happened now, and it will happen again. Not maybe this time, next time from Europe, but it could be from somewhere else. For the simple fact that terrorism is not a local terrorism. Terrorism that we are facing nowadays is a global one. Mm -hmm. A global one that is actually been managed by certain intelligence. Mm -hmm. These are not the small attacks that happens because of a small group uh, claiming responsibilities. These are well planned, well thought of, well timed, and very difficult to, to, to recognize. Because mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, when you see this bomb did not really, in case, in case that this is a bomb, because we have to put the what if scenario, yeah. why it exploded or it happens to drop in the sea? Mm -hmm. Why not over the lands of, uh, of France or of uh, the islands of Greece when it is flying over them? So there are a lot of questions that, that tells me that this is well managed. Mm -hmm. I don't buy the idea that this is a malfunction. Because if it is a malfunction, then all what happens before in all, whether in Brussels or in uh, Paris during uh, the November attacks that took place on the squares of, of Paris. So the issue now is not... And Bel in Belgium and in Susa, Tunisia, and in Ankara, and in Istanbul. Well, when it comes to the Middle East, they yeah. say we are the Muslims, we are the Islamist fundamentalists, but when it comes in Europe, it's terrorism. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, the terminology that we use are, are, are separate when we come for the same issue of mm -hmm. global terrorism. So the question now is how, how the United Nations and the National and the Security Council of the United Nations will deal with such attacks. These are not uh, minor, these are not uh, domestic, these are global. They have to take global action, not just an action from Egypt or from France. The double measures issue, do you think that this is going to be implemented once again? Of course, when you see the when, when His Excellency Shukri, when he was talking about terrorism, you, you, you look at the response of uh, the representative of the United States in the National Security, in the Security Council, when she was claiming about uh, human rights in Egypt. No, not necessarily in Egypt, but human rights problems. And, you know, uh, it's not the issue. But yeah. as you can say, uh, you know, this double-edged, double, -edged, double uh, yep. image, whatever you want to name it, you know. Sir, since you have mentioned this, how to differentiate, in your own opinion, uh, between two things? Between uh, just receiving a piece of advice from an ally and from intervention into our domestic or local affairs. But I think till the moment it's a very uh, fine threat. Well, uh, politics are politics. Okay. National security of any country can stretch its arm to other countries. Mm -hmm. So I don't buy the idea that uh, you have allies that give you an advice. Mm -hmm. uh,